When we say workforce analytics, it's not just macro level numbers about how many people turned over or things that you would report out uh, traditionally within a company. Workforce analytics really started, I would say was birthed in the 1970s. Uh, Dr. Jacques Fixens started this um, started doing research on how we can quantify what happens in human resources and really started a field of human capital metrics. That evolved into more complex metrics and more complex benchmarks over the 80s and 90s. And in the 2000s, we started seeing this look at how do you use larger amounts of data to be more specific about how you do things. The Workforce Analytics today is really looking at this merger of science and mathematics and business and communications to really engage with employees and help both employees and companies be more successful as they interact. If I put just my data science hat on, I want every piece of data I could possibly get. But with workforce analytics, and especially within a workplace, you have to really be careful about that. You want to make sure that you're balancing the interests of the employees and the employer, balancing what feels like Big Brother and what does not. So there's a lot of things that we use to start with, things that a company has always had and that people are comfortable with a company having. And then you start looking, how can we be creative and find other parts of data? So when we have just internal data, we can look at how we're pushing people out. We might want to see how people are pulled out as well. So you gather external data about market conditions in different geographies, about what the demand is for different types of roles, what is being posted on job boards. Is there an explosion in a certain type of software engineer that people look? And you're going to know that they're going to be recruited more heavily. So you start melding external data with that. And then the goal is really to get as much as possible by being open and transparent with your employees, to say, here's why this is valuable, both to you and to the corporation. And how can we get more information from you that you're comfortable sharing. So asking for people to volunteer access, even though most companies already have it, to their emails or to their instant messaging systems. That way you build up the largest possible data set to get the most similar to reality as you can get in your models. One of the, the greatest benefits of workforce analytics is it starts a different type of conversation with the employee. They realize that you care and why you care and why you're looking at this stuff. And there's always differences in hiring and layoffs and different things that are happening where companies are, are constantly shifting. Strategies always change. Um, what worked yesterday doesn't work today. As industries and marketing and everything changes, so will companies. But if you're open about what you're doing, you're saying we're trying to be as good as we can to you and to us, it makes for a much better experience for employees. Working with my company to find ways to make me happy where I am. So you're dealing with data about people, so it's not clean. Just like any type of large data sets that you deal with, there's a lot of things that don't necessarily make sense or that were entered or that's just noise that's not necessarily helpful. So a lot of challenges just on the pure data side to get things in a way that you can do a real analysis. And then you have problems on the communication side and on the relationships with employees side. You want to make sure that they know what's happening, that people are comfortable with the work that you're doing, and that you're able to communicate the results. You can do some really great science and not know how to communicate it, and it becomes not great science. As employment changes and as your job and your personal life become more and more intermixed, having a public presence and really being who you are at work and at home becomes more and more valuable. Trying not to draw a hard line and companies want you because of who you are. You want a diverse team and you want people who do all kinds of different types of things because they bring different perspectives to the table when you're trying to be innovative. And so having a public presence and being comfortable with your public presence is something that you should, you should do. A lot of companies don't look at um, things that are not work-related. People are still trying to figure out what that line is, but I think in the end, what companies value the most is knowing who they have and going after people who they believe are valuable to the company. <laughs>